Okay. Yes. Uh, so I come from, from Italy, from Milan, Italy. So, and, and my company is about uh, fashion, fashion industry, luxury fashion. Uh, the, let's say digital future of fashion. Plus, we are one of Microsoft startups. Just recently graduated from Beats Park Plus program. So a lot of uh, we used a lot of credits and learned how to do some incredible stuff with Microsoft Cloud. It is highly recommended. So Beats Park supports and helps startups. And I thank so much, Microsoft. Happy to be here in the headquarters. Well, uh, my presentation will be quite quite technical. No, I was instructed to to showcase, so I prepared a slide. Slides, very concrete things, how it works, not, not much bullet, bullet points. Uh, still start from refreshing what we discussed yesterday. What is the problem? In fashion industry, we have a huge problem, which is a real black hole between the fashion itself and the retail. Retail has a mission to outsell anything that it, they have in stock. They, it's invented so much on the retail side. It's like last mile, optimized. Optimized. Every single operation is optimized with all possible technologies, but at the same time, the biggest problem is not in the last mile. The biggest time problem is it that fashion system is producing some products, uh, services, which become outdated already next day, and they'll, they will start will be start selling few months after. So it's a, it's a great black hole between when we produce, when we design products, and when we start them selling while we're still optimizing on the last mile. Well, this can be also solved, but in a radical way, in a, in a disruptive way. My company uh, is pushing this idea, we call it virtual retail, virtual retail. So the idea is to virtualize the, basically the, 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 the process instead of going from left to right through all the phases, design, prototyping, manufacturing, distribution, stock, sales, and destruction the end of the, of, the, of the season, we know. We propose just after design, do it by doing it correctly in a digital way, going into digital distribution, and then going by cycles. Let me show you how we mean after just this another <laughs> nice slide. And this is who we are. Uh, to, to, to make it clear, we don't produce nothing. nothing. We work in fashion with the fashion brands, but we don't do our stuff, no? We're a technology company. So the, 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 this kind of cloud with many products around it, uh, well, we filled quite a lot of patents uh, and so on, but the sense was to say that, to avoid questions that how do you produce, how do you control, no, 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 we only supply technology to the companies. And, and final, not technical, yet not technical, uh, fact is that Regardless, we are in Italy. Look at the flags. No, the team is totally international. There are less than 20% of Italians in our team, including myself, and that's why we believe to have a completely open-minded approach. What we have done, okay. We called end-to-end -end platform for digital transformation for fashion and luxury companies. In this case, it's a solution concentrated on footwear, footwear and, and uh, small leather goods. And the sense of this solution, totally cloud solution, SaaS API, is to connect the phases of product design to retail and manufacturing, reconnect it all in real time by dematerializing basically all, uh, all physical links uh, in in, and make them, how to say, in, in one cycle to be able to uh, constantly change. So change product, test it in retail, try to produce, again, change it if needed, go to retail and so on. So from, from the connection with scan systems, uh, extreme realistic uh, visualization of 3D items, uh, new customer experience, integration with advanced uh, tools like scanning, food scanning, body scanning, and then experimenting on uh, the model that we call hybrid manufacturing. And I will give some, some details. So the first, first uh, phase, first part is uh, digital product creation. So how the products are incept, not how they're invented. Here we have this huge problem, samples and prototypes. Now the most time of product design, of collection design, fashion companies spend on designing samples and prototypes. 
Well, it's it's a crazy. It's like a Excel sheet that, that we that we seen before. It's like the pieces of paper that we feel not to track. Here we have these with the samples. They're physical, uh, regardless uh, the structure of. Uh, uh, design teams where they are. Normally they stay in different countries, in different offices, but they send here, there, uh, everywhere the physical pieces of samples and spend a lot of time and energy, plus it's totally unsustainable. So the idea is to, instead of this, let's go to virtual prototyping. First step, very difficult, digitalization of materials. We developed a pipeline, integrated pipeline with the scanners, advanced scanners for materials. So to get all physical properties of materials very deep uh, enough to visualize and not only analyze uh, also metadata of the materials and it's stored into cloud in a special special module, digital uh, materials library. Then our software you see among these few softwares uh, um, recognized by Pantonix right for re realistic uh, visualization. So our solution uh, is certified then it means that if the material is done well, the result will be photorealistic. And this is how it looks like. So second step is to uh, integrate CAD data. So we suck data right from CAD systems uh, into the cloud, merge it with, materi with materials, digitalized materials, and able to produce this level of, th this, this pro product never existed. It's only CAD plus uh, well-scanned materials, or the other one, which is more, Sympathic, more beautiful, I believe. No, real-time products like that could be never produced, could be never needed, could be never uh, eschewed as part of uh, uh, of catalog or exist. It doesn't matter. They 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 are presented in the cloud in a virtual way and can be part of different different scenarios. So this is for what uh, collection design and management. Then second part is retail. Here we also call it virtual retail. This is the scenario we are gonna help companies to implement, personalization and customization, how to do it right, of course with, uh, with the 3D models, of course with a mix of digital, physical and digital environment. And uh, well, this is how it looks like inside <laughs> visuals inside our platform. So you have any concrete product is made of components, of materials, it's structured, everything is uh, has its own ID, every component can be um, located uh, directly. Then the customer experience for retail, for example, is this. You select materials, it will generate in real time, apply it, and you see photorealistic product. Again, it could never exist. It could exist, it doesn't matter. For a virtual system, we just visualize it. This is a concrete scenario how this, uh, this approach is uh, uh, is used uh, no, by, by luxury fashion brand, is a, a no stock store, boutique without stock at all. You have only physical merchandising, only samples. You can touch them, you can see, it, see them, look at them carefully. Then all the catalog presented only virtually, no, like you, you have seen before, no consumer can decide which materials, colors, uh, combinations of design they, they prefer, system will put on together and all these elements generate in real time uh, uh, photorealistic uh, version of 3D and show it and you order it. Next, uh, we, I like to call it WeChat for uh, digital retail, especially when I speak with Chinese friends. Uh, now we realized basically an inventory of every single component and materials in the way that each component has its own QR code. So basically you may, you may select uh, a physical product say I like this model with its own QR code, but of when the, the upper part is of another color, another material with its own QR code. You just scan QR code, system finds in the cloud the needed component, put, put it together, uh, makes rendering, and well, again, we, we, get, we got this uh, uh, complete product in 3D. Then, finally, where we come from, the future is, is that, I believe it will be totally virtual, uh, augmented, and so on. We don't develop applications, we don't care about applications, we supply the content. Now in our case, our platform sees uh, uh, fashion products as content. No, basically, we, 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 we would like to say that we are like Netflix. We just stream fashion products, then you do whatever you want with them. 
You can simply only visualize them, you can buy them, you can use them for product testing, for whatever you want. No, we just stream 3D products, 3D collection. Next scenario, next scenario is, uh, well, what, why it's interesting for luxury and fashion companies. It allows experimenting new models like design co-creation. So you have some, some uh, style models uh, originally designed by, by, by the brand or, or designer and then consumers can add their own combinations. These, uh, these could be a selling model, so you can order these products if company is able to produce it and, 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 and deliver, or you can use this data only for a company to improve the knowledge about uh, the future models, so, so, so how to do new collections uh, uh, based on the knowledge that, that, that people would prefer to buy. And we even went further with this model. We, uh, we have designed our own internal, yet it's a just internal project, but hopefully soon will become uh, a product is uh, a way to design collection based on known design elements uh, with help of data and artificial intelligence. Basically, uh, we, we have knowledge of trends from the market and we have 3D data from how particular products could be made with all possible characteristics. We have quite impressive archive of, uh, at least for shoes, you know how different shoes are made and uh, Artificial intelligence, a specific neural network, is instructed to help designers to generate those ideal design combinations that will be liked by the market. And the final, final piece, yeah, I'm almost finished, is then when third part that is interconnected through this virtual solution is the manufacturing, you know, hybrid and automated manufacturing scenario. Here we collaborate with uh, industrial leaders uh, in the industrial uh, manufacturing space. Uh, Atom Group in Italy is one of the most uh, famous companies for, for the footwear. They do machines, industrial automation, robotics, and so on. And our cloud uh, middleware is, uh, is piloting these new systems. So we, we made uh, two experimental uh, factories called Factory of the Future, where a product is created right in front of a consumer from custom configuration of the product, which never existed, never been done. You just say, I want it like that with all these materials. And then robots, uh, humans all together start producing it. And uh, the last la latest project, I will show you a video of, very short, short showcase, how the robots can finalize the operation started by humans. Smart, take a smile. Zero, zero waste, zero logistics, uh, everything consumer, consumer driven. Uh, well, uh, future vision, but already possible. Final step, all this 3D, all this uh, digitalization drives to advanced analytics. Now, not any retail company is able to understand so much about products uh, as those who design them, who have structure, who have the inventory of components, of styles, of, uh, of materials and colors, and we have it. So we're able to generate an analytics that helps understand every single point, every, th every single idea about why some particular products are, where, are good uh, candidates to be sold or not so good. I thank you very much. Hope it was not, so, not too technical. Any questions? See one over here, we'll start there. No, simple, a product. Well, oh, a product. Well, yes, for right, consumers. Right, right. right, well, no, not, not, I'm not saying just for production, because there's many uh, buyers or um, things that, let's say you're working with their customer and they need a, a, a physical sample for advertising, um, so you're still going to need a little bit of real sample to come back. Absolutely, they will always need a help. Yeah, I hope, yes. Right. Not so many, not 300. Right. For yeah. for season, right, exactly. no, they could they could make twenty five physical right. for base models. All the rest goes to digital. That that's what we're trying to optimize. Yeah. 
Star? I think there's an issue that comes in with uh, the color where the materials, depending on what the materials um, that you would throw on the foot, sure. how they would fit. So it, sometimes if you're going to add or remove, you, you don't know exactly how, you, how is that going to impact uh, the pressure on your foot, how much is that taking in, how to... Um, yeah, yeah. Something that on someone's foot that you may not be, you can't see today. Sure, absolutely. It's a, it's a very important part of, of uh, at least that, that doesn't matter. Uh, it's not about robots, of course. It's not, not about production. This is part of product design. Right. So how to incorporate in product design knowledge about fitting, about what consumers know. Well, it's on the level of uh, integration between CAD and samples and, and, and try on and you go by head, yeah. Yes, yes, sure, sure. We we are part of that, but it has nothing to do with with, with robots with production. I mean, right? The yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. So more for more for before you even get to the production part. Of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's very important. I don't know what happened here. Okay, sorry. There is a way. There is a way. Surely. Yeah. yeah this is the, this is what called data oriented design. So you know, if you know who are your customers, you know who is your target and by, scan, by scanning on feet or by, by making even simulations based on, on sales data, you can generate uh, an optimal uh, shoe last and then design based on it. So to make it not only beautiful, but also functional. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think that it just can be, it's more of an analysis of what you can do and how you can take it and make it different that shows that type accurate. Ah, okay. Now you are talking about the, the consumer part. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the retail. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, well, in 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 the, in the retail, they it's. Can, they can't wrap their heads. Sometimes they can't wrap their head around the retail. In the retail, I can tell you how, how they do. No. So in, in any case, uh, in in a normal store today, without any di anything digital, any no uh, any advanced technology, you just come and you try, or you found something, or you don't found. That's it. No. If you if you didn't find, you just go out. In a the sense of digital store is that you can find that the product that, that you like aesthetically, then your food will be measured, and then company, there is a guarantee from the company that they will do a, a, a shoe that fit for you. So, I mean, we have all the data. It is by, by uh, after scanning your foot, after uh, an easy analysis, it is possible to, to find uh, a closest shoe last in a factory or really make to make to measure. That, I mean, that there, there, there are the techniques. In any case, the technology helps uh, uh, serving each customer individually. Yeah. I have a comment on that, actually. Hi, Andre, over here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> Please. Uh, um, so one of the things that I think that brands in particular need to understand around customization, personalization, and on-demand manufacturing is that it's, it is a paradigm shift from not only the, the volume model, but from the design point of view in that you need to understand it's more like project runway. <laughs> Designers, here are your constraints. Now go design within these constraints. So if you have the constraint of knowing that comfort is a, a factor for your consumer, there are certainly certain materials that you can use that would be easier to factor for comfort. You wouldn't go for a harder, you know, vaquetza or something right, right. that might pinch your bind. So these are all the new factors that I think brands need to be considering when looking at this new paradigm, that it's not just, well, you can't produce anything that I can come up with. No, now you need to think about what your, your tools are to produce within the new paradigm. I they like to be able to feel and touch. Yeah, I think there's always going to be a need to touch and feel product. And that's why Andrea was saying, you know, you'll have like the robo store you'll ha or you'll have samples. 
You can touch and feel the different types of swatches of textiles. You can actually try on a sample size shoe. Um, have the volume of you know hundreds of samples every season. Produce as less as you can, yeah. both samples and physical products, and iterate as, as quickly, as frequently uh, as, as you can. So any new fact discovered about the consumer or the trends from the market drives you to make next week another, a, sim uh, a simply different, col different collection. If everything is digitalized, it's very easy. You, tonight, you change it, tomorrow morning, all stores update their inventory. With a physical, one-way uh, life cycle, it's not possible. Not only as fast fashion do, but we say that it's not acceptable that way, that the overproduction in this crazy way, it's not acceptable. I think that's one of the most interesting problem uh, sets around fashion tech, is that there's always a layer of subjectivity. <laughs> you know, there can be structural, there, there can be descriptive, and there could be brand aesthetic choices, but uh, there's always a subjective nature around fit, whether it's shoes or clothing or whatever. You can be a size large, but you force yourself to squeeze into a small because you love how you look. Okay, that's up to you. Exactly. Good. Very much. So okay. one, more, one more question. Ah. One more question here. Uh, I think this is fascinating. It's part of the bespoke Thanks. revolution. But I was wondering, uh, who, do you, uh, who are your clients? Are they um, brand names like... Uh, uh, like Nike, who wants to add this dimension to their product line of customization, or is it just a new manufacturer who wants to start making things? That, that's a that's fantastic question. No? And, and there is no easy, no easy answer because it, it depends. No, from the point of view of business model, I have my three category of clients. From the point of view of what market will bring me, I want to see. No, our goal is to be an enabler. So we have a business model and go-to-market strategy that where there is a, an idea to sell to big important brands, license to help them doing blah, blah, blah. Very easy, very clear. Medium companies to help them like in, in consulting base or really under, help them understanding how to go to the market. And very small companies and independent designers will give them a full solution, just the platform. While... At the same time, it may happen anything, any new scenario. No, we build the platform to, to have it like just end-to-end -end for digital transformation, do whatever you want. It could be a designer without manufacturing uh, partner and we can supply it because we have factories connected into the cloud. It could be one brand that is brand, retailer, and manufacturing all together. They only need a piece of software. Could be anything. But not, maybe not Nike, unlikely for me because they already have all that stuff. No, Nike and Adidas, they, they've built it at home, spend a lot of money, and they are a great example for everybody else, while everybody else are not able to spend so much money themselves internally for research and development, and we are happy to help. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, up next we have containers. Uh, and we have Graham Parker, who's the co-founder and CEO, um, based out of the UK. Uh, Containers has built a cutting-edge ocean freight platform serving some of the biggest brands in shipping. Um, Containers allows users to get instant container shipping rates and transact entire shipments online in under one minute, saving time and money. And we have two more um, presentations, including this one, between y'all and the weekend, or in Charleston, it'd be the weekend, but in New York, it's uh, <laughs> the middle of the week. Um, we have a two and a half day work week in Charleston, so. Yeah, well, I'm back, so, you know. So with that, we'll um, turn it over to Graham. Y'all give him a round of applause and get it going. Hey, everybody. Uh, 